Fat Kev Smith, Fat Kev Smith. Look at his man teats, Fat Kev Smith. He's holding on his titties and he's flopping back and forth. Oh, look, he found a quarter underneath. Hey, man, it's Fat Kev Smith. Uh, not talking about my man teats. I'm talking about my oral because I'm good at it. I like to give a lot of oral, man. You want to get some oral from me and my friends? Come see a smart co show. Come see a smart co show. Uh, this Friday, man, is your opportunity. If you're in Los Angeles, the city of angels, man, you come see me and Ralph doing Hollywood Babylon right there at our new home at the Improv, Hollywood Improv, right on Melrose, man. 10 o'clock on Friday. The tickets are almost sold out, so get on get on the stick quick, son. Uh, next show is not for another week, and that's when we're heading out to North Carolina, son, going to Charlotte, to the Fillmore on June 6th. Tickets at csmod.com. Day after that. You can catch us in Columbus, Ohio at Studio 35, man. June 7th, right there. Me and little Jason Muse doing Jay and Silent Bob super groovy cartoon movie screening and the podcast right afterwards. Studio 35 in Columbus, June 7th. June 8th, Covington, Kentucky. Madison Theater, man. Come on there, Cincinnati. Come on out and see us. Cincinnati area, lower Kentucky area or higher Kentucky. I'm not sure where that is on the map. Kentuckians will tell me. Right now, Twitter's blowing up with you jackass. Uh, Madison Theater. That's all you need to know. June 8th, man. Go to For tickets, go to csmod.com. How about June 9th? Jay and Silent Bob Super Groovy Cartoon Movies happening in Oakmont, Pennsylvania, man. The Oaks Theater. That's right there uh, near Pittsburgh. Right where we shot like Zag and Mary and Dogma and whatnot. Uh, come out and see us. This is a good screening for me. Real good screening because it's kind of the reason I started all these little screenings is because of the Oaks. And I'll tell you there on June 9th when you come to see us. Meanwhile, back on the other side of the coast, Kevin Bry getting together, do a little bit of Why Bry, June 14th. Me and Bry are going to be doing Why Bry at the Improv. Um, looks like uh, the same slot we'd be doing Babylon in normally, but Babylon's off that week because Ralph's shooting a movie, motion picture. So come see us. Tickets at seasmod.com. Uh, or if you don't want to travel all the way to Los Angeles, how about Ontario, California, man? June 16th, me and Bry doing Why Bry at the Ontario Improv. Tickets at csmod.com all right man when you're not doing that look you're like i can't make it to any of your fucking stupid smart co shows well how about you check out kevin smith's cartoon lagoon on itunes go peep that or uh you know you want to do something free like i don't want to pay for your shit i want it free uh go to youtube man or here do this go to how does he shave.com that's this campaign that gillette's doing for man of steel and it's me my embolic uh the, the MythBuster kids kids guys and uh, as well as Bill Nye, the science guy, and competing with our theories about how Superman actually shapes. Go check that out, man. It's fun watch. They're, they're very short, minute and a half, two minutes. And mine's probably the longest, about three minutes, because you know me, I can't stop talking. Listen to me, I'm doing it right now. So I'm going to stop and let you go on with another fine Smodco podcast. We've we've uh, we've we've accepted that glazed look. Now we're taking full control. Okay. Yeah. I'm officially a robot. <laughs> you got a filthy grease trap. And by law, are are they forced to change specifications, the specs on things in apartments for fucking fatties? Tell them, Steve, Dave. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Tell them, Steve, Dave. BQ is here, my God. Hello. The jet-setting BQ and Walt is here. And Walt is furious. Walt, you're furious? I'm not furious. No? Yeah. I heard you're I furious. I have been furious in a couple weeks. Um, what's this about poll questions I hear people aren't coming through? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I put it out there. We're, we're talking about pod wars. Right off the bat, we're talking about something that is in the future, which I, I'm loath to do. But pod wars, it's shaping up. It's coming together. Um, I, I've been told not to call it pod Greece, the thing that happens in Greece originally. I won't oh. even say the word. Why? Because um, the Olympic Committee can take you to task for you. The Olympics is a copyrighted thing. 
Only if you make money off it. We're not making money off it. Oh, are yes, we? we are, Q. Oh, we are? We have yeah, two we're... out of three team names have been sponsored. Really? Yes. We have the opening ceremony sponsored. Whoa. Uh, we've got sponsors coming in left. We've got prizes coming in. Really? Do you want someone to snag? Do you want the Olympic Committee to come in and take the prizes that we are that I've secured? Do you want to take someone's oh, self-published well, novel that they want to give as a prize? <laughs> We're looking in your direction, Ladondo. <laughs> <laughs> no, really, no. But yeah, so I, I have to change. It's not called the Pod Olympics anymore. It's called Pod Wars. Pod Wars. All right. <laughs> Luke is better it's not. <laughs> but yeah, it's coming together. Um, and I, tr- I put out that I needed some people to help me poll. Like the family, like, you know, I asked 100 people yeah. the question. And some people can't figure it out that they just answered the question. I gave them the question. They just sent me back the answers. And I'm like, no, I need you to go out and ask 100 people this question. Right. But they didn't get it. And then other people are like, oh, these questions are too um, too crazy. I can't ask these out in public. I'm going to have to not do it. People are like, they're failing me. Mm. I should this be used unusual. to this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, what's, what's that in your voice? Surprise? What, what's going on? Well, these are strangers. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, I'm mean, super excited. I mean, there's still spots open, and, and if you want to um, be, become a sponsor, there's a few events that are still open. You don't know anything about the Pot Olympics. You weren't here, right? No, I wasn't here. Did you listen to last week's show? I didn't. Uh, well, you need to write a rap. I got to write a rap? You got to write oh, a rap cool. that you are going to say to uh, Mike Ming or Sunday Jeff. So okay. uh, tell me who you want to do. I won't make you write three raps. Just tell me who you want to do off camera, off mic. It's got to be... But insulting. actually, actually, you got to do Ming because his Q, I already, that's right. I already pigeonholed him as he has to do Mike okay. and Jeff. <laughs> so you have to do two raps? Yeah, he's got to do two. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought how fucked up is that? I know how, how uncomfortable it's going to be for him because I told the, the listeners and Q, I want, I want them to feed, I want them to be in a, like, to have a visual reaction when, as Q just. It's gonna be a dick. Cuts them, yeah. Like, and they're okay. they're like, oh my god! I didn't think he was gonna be this brutal. Right. So, like, can you imagine I him having know. to do that to Chief or or, or Jeff? I mean, <laughs> Chief may explode on you. <laughs> uh, Jeff, I mean, it's so hard to know what his reaction might be Sunday. Yeah, you don't know. Yeah. Well, I so you guys kicked by two different people. <laughs> <laughs> so you got to come up with a rap for Ming. Dis and Ming. Dis and Ming, which okay. should be easy. Um, and there are other homework you got to do. Oh, um, well, you know, I'm not going to bore our listeners with going over what the Pod Olympics are, but that's your that's pod your Olympics. <laughs> the pod, I mean, the Pod <laughs> Wars are. And we, and if you want to, uh, and if any of the listeners out there want to get on board, they're going quick. And this is going to be probably the most downloaded episode of Tell Em Steve Dave in the history of Tell Em Steve Dave. Right. Um, the most, at least the most anticipated. I mean, because nobody's really nobody was anticipating our greatest episodes because no one knew they were going to be. Right. But this one has definitely got the juice. Uh, I cannot tell you how many people come into the store. Really? And talk about how excited they are and they want to be involved. And I'm like, you can't other than giving a sponsorship. Wow. So, yeah. No, people, so the same is going to go for those guys. Like Ming has to rap about one of us. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I'm not going to tell you who he's got. I'm not okay. going to give away <laughs> that stuff. I hope Sunday Jeff got me. <laughs> I want to hear him rap. Yeah, so uh, uh, so it's it's going to be like an eight mile kind of like wrap off mm-hmm. where where you're like, and we're gonna have um, I'll be the I guess I'll be judging, or I'm gonna have maybe have another person here judging, um, who I'm not at liberty to say, and um, so they'll judge the wrap off. Well, yeah, we need wins, somebody who's team. into rap, right? Like um, no, 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 you already got it already. Don't, oh, don't even, oh, don't even ponder. There's okay. no need to ponder. There's <laughs> right. no need for you to do anything except right, write a rap. I was trying to do something except sit here with a glazed look in my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> we've we've uh, we've we've accepted that glazed look. Now we're taking full control. Okay. Yeah. I'm officially a robot. <laughs> <laughs> Point me in the direction and tell me what to do. Get on the mic and talk. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you got to do from now on. So yeah, so contact K M E W E S two and inquire about uh, sponsorship today, and uh, you need to do it before uh, June 9th, probably. So I'd have a lockdown. June ninth is probably the last day you'll be able to get in on this. As if I recall correctly, the the hard fast date you told me was um, June fourteenth, right? That That's changed. changed. Oh, it changed. But we're not telling anybody when it is because yeah. then we'll have. Everybody will come yeah, down. yeah, yeah. Okay. 
We want, we need to, we need, we need seclusion from this. I don't know why, but we do. <laughs> yeah. It's just better that way. Otherwise, get him will show up. Um, well, you wouldn't, you wouldn't invite get him anyway. All right, I'll tell you what. Get him's going to light the torch. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to be the sir. He's going to he's going to open up the Olympics uh, with a little perfect. speech. <laughs> and then he'll because no one else had a zip out. So. <laughs> uh, the default. <laughs> Brilliant. But when you, and then we're gonna have a special guest to close it out, though, too. Okay, great. But I'm not gonna tell. Wait, did somebody already um, sponsor the opening? Yes. Okay, so that's locked in. That's locked so in. So we didn't just lose. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Any chance of getting that locked in? All right, good. All right. It's gonna be more impressive than what was it China last time when there's like a thousand Chinese people like, <laughs> synchronized, synchronized. Yeah. yeah. That's gonna be pretty awesome. Um, I was, I was just reading this today while, like, I know your daughters follow <clears throat> all different, um, cooking shows and, and, the the, mm-hmm. the, the baking dude. Yeah. They love that. This, uh, what is their opinion? Do they have an opinion on this Amy's baking company? Have you heard about this person in Arizona? What'd she do? Um, was she on one of the shows? Oh, even I heard about this. Yeah. What yeah. show was she on? Was she on the next great Kitchen baker? Nightmares. It was with Gordon Ramsay, right? Gordon oh, Ramsay, yeah. I know. Yeah, they do watch that though, and they they love. It's weird. They love it when they get taken to task. Mm-hmm. Like when the people on the show, like, Not you're, like you're, your father at all. <laughs> 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 like they love it when you're like, you got a you got a filthy grease trap. Mm-hmm. You you got hair in the soup. He goes, what's wrong with you? You know, let me see you. You know, like they they love it when they when they're when they're called out on the carpet. They love to see people get dressed down. Huh? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, this Amy's Baking Company, this evidently is like, this is ongoing. Um, it's someplace in Arizona, and I guess they really can't, people can't stand these two, Amy and Sammy Bugzoglu, I don't know, some fucking weird last name. Um, they said that they found fruit flies floating in their cocktails. Oh. Um, and uh, the guy immediately became defensive. He said there were no bugs in the drinks, and he would pay for all the drinks. And then he said, get out. To who, Gordon? Ramsey? No, I guess the customers. They th- they're constantly throwing customers out. Um, I, don't, I just don't, under- I don't understand what... I can't even... Im- I've never been thrown out of anywhere in my life. I can't even imagine what I would have to do to get thrown out of a restaurant. Quinn? <laughs> I mean, I can tell you, I've gotten thrown out of plenty of places. The last place I got thrown out of was a season two premiere party. Of a practical joke. <laughs> so fairly From recent. your mom, right? <laughs> yeah. No, no, my mom didn't know. They they were able to uh, they keep were, it hush hush. Y- yeah, they because the bouncers all agreed with me. It was the manager who was a prick, and the bouncers uh, were like, that's right. well, we "I was at that party. premiere." It was it, it was right after. It was the last five minutes of the party. I was getting my jacket mm-hmm. when it happened. Okay, but uh, yeah, you weren't even drunk, were you? I was not drunk. It wasn't my fault. It was, you looked it like I, I said your, your eyes didn't look normal, but they didn't look drunk eyes. You didn't have the Q eyes, but you definitely <laughs> no. had some alcohol in those eyes. <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, you didn't it have was, the Ming eyes. <laughs> no, <the> Ming eyes. <laughs> nah, the guy was a prick. The guy was just a prick, and I didn't take his guff, and that was that. Well, this here here's a picture of the couple, um, Sammy, and I guess that's Amy. Okay. And she has a she has a serious case of bitch face, right? Yeah, she does. I mean, she's got it going on. Yeah. Um. What's that mean, bitch face? Looks like a fucking bitch. Yeah, it's well, like just, just, just the normal expression. Yeah, you can tell. Really? Let me see that face again. Here, I'm going to give you a little. Just check the check that bitch face out right there. <laughs> Why? Because, well, the eyebrows are, well, the eyebrows are drawn in pencil with a the, with the little stern look on them already. Yeah. So maybe that's what's given. Maybe that's like she needs to do the eyebrows a little bit more softer and, and higher arch she, them. she should do them like Abe Vigoda. She's like, <laughs> the because they're, are, they're drawn like this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she looks like like Cruella Deville type. I think it's more than just the eyebrows, though. There's just something about the the face. Um, but anyway, so so Gordon Ramsay, I guess, shit all over him. They said their their kitchen sucked hey, in the Kitchen Nightmare show. What's it? Gordon Ramsay is he the guy that looks like he's on steroids? He's the Hell's Kitchen. No, oh, no, 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 that's uh, not the dude with the little head and the uh, giant okay. body. <laughs> This is another show that's uh, that your restaurant sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I so, you know what, you know what they also they like to watch is this show about fish and tanks. Like they build like <laughs> they, this like uh, company. I guess I think it's in Las Vegas or Florida. They build fish tanks like these outrageous fish tanks to right. the stars, like or to you know quote unquote stars. Right. Um, and I saw the other day that there's another uh, like a clone of that show, like. 
like anything that has any level of like success, they will make a, the some other station will clone it and just right. do the same exact thing. There's no shame. Um, no, well, why, why? I mean, you know. Well, I think they said um, True TV. You like fucking <laughs> <laughs> made, made a lot of money off of that. Not telling. <laughs> <laughs> um, they. I remember the first season of Comic Book Man. Uh, one of the guys told me that I think they had twenty different Pawn Star type shows in various stages of production. Obviously, oh they don't goodness. all get picked up, right? Um, but yeah, it's it's it's. It's like every like Spike TV has one, TBS has ones like every. Did you, did you see the one where it's like um, Nightmare Tenants or the World's Worst Tenants, something like that? I've seen it in the, like I've seen it in the scroll when I'm looking around like what am I gonna watch? Mm -hmm. And I say to myself, who the fuck would ever watch this? Well, here he is. <laughs> no, I was just, I was flipping around and I happened to see him. Like, obviously, they're reenactments, but it's this really fat dude. He looked a lot like Chumley, actually, but fatter than Chumley. And he was wedged into his bathtub for three days. He couldn't get out. Oh. <laughs> and the cameras were on him. The cameras are on the guy, of course. Oh, it's they're, a, it's a reenactment? They're saying it's not a reenactment, <laughs> but there's like all like sludgy water and shit, um. and the guy's fucking screaming and crying. <laughs> and then like the, the the dude then turns around and like threatens to sue the I guess the apartment manager is somehow liable because the tub wasn't big enough for the fat guy. <laughs> is that what that, is that really what uh, people like landlords have to now have tubs that are because we are getting fatter. I mean, it's no there's no doubt about it, right? Yeah. As Americans, we are, and I think they even said it in the English, in England, they have a fat problem. Really? Yeah. So, do they now have to like buy tubs with the to, uh, the, at, a, at a bigger tub now? I literally need a hot tub. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, by law, are are they forced to change specifications, the specs on things in apartments for fucking fatties? I don't know. I mean, unless you're going to be held accountable. Like, I mean, if there's a law that's like, hey, if, you're, if your tenant's a fatty, this qualifies fat news. Um, yeah, if your tenant's a fatty and he's like, hey, I got stuck in my tub, <laughs> and then you turn around and you sue and you win, then I guess, yeah. Oh, wow. Could you imagine the... the, the you're like, I'm just trying to make my way. Like, I'm like, I my, brought my, a normal bathtub yeah. and it wasn't good enough. <laughs> yeah, it's like he wasn't this fat one when I first rented to him. He got fat and then he fell in the tub. Um, like, how much? Like, how much is too much to upgrade, though? Um, in in terms of tub size. Well, yeah, like how, like yeah, like you get a new tenant, like, but you could be like, let's say a guy come, what guy comes to rent the apartment. Yeah, he's a fatty. Okay. And you and you turn him down because you're like, well, fuck. In your head, you're going, he's too fat for my tub. Yeah, I, I, don't want, I, I don't want to be yeah. on world's worst tenant. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I'm not going to give him the apartment. But then that's against the law too. It's discriminating against the against his weight. Yeah, you just give it. A different There's no reason. win. There's a, you You're can't just win. He's black. <laughs> <laughs> or gay or something else. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I guess you would have to just come up with a different reason. But I'll tell you what, man. Like when I. Um, when I went to uh, – it was from Newark to uh, Chicago. Right. And I was on United and, like, I was on the second to last row of the plane. I've never – if I wasn't a fatty, it probably would have been fine. But holy fucking shit are those seats tight. Yeah. And I guess that was an older plane or something. They're all terrible. Um, JetBlue's not too bad. And even the next United flight I took um, – it was like economy plus, yeah. which is like, <laughs> that's really putting a silk hat on a pig, right? <laughs> Trying to fucking dress that shit up. Um, but, but that wasn't so bad, the economy plus, but uh, it, it was awful. It was so tight and so hot. And for two hours, I'm just like, if I was going to LA, I think I might've been like, fuck it. I'm getting out of the plane. I'm not going. Really? Yeah. It, it was just, it, it's too confining man it's too um what's the word i'm looking for what's in the, like claustrophobic constrictive you know? yeah yeah i even texted walt i was gonna call him on the when kevin and i did the show that night just to agree with him like i never want to fly anymore 
It was just such a fucking hellish day of travel. It took all fucking day. Yeah, tra- I mean, I, all the traveling I'm doing, I'm sick of it, too. So I hear you, man. It blew. Those planes suck. And the airlines suck, too. Like, they're all just... You meet, like, one nice person out of fucking, like, 50 fucking cunts. Yeah, bitch faces. Bitch faces. Guys and girls. <laughs> <laughs> there was... um. What, ha- what happened was I... um. <clears throat> I got to the to the airport and I had to bring uh, shirts with me. Right, they mm. sell shirts at the Groovy Movie thing. Now, did, did you happen to see these bags of shirts that my brother packed? <laughs> no. Oh my god! I think like uh, Jordan uses his wife was like, "Hey, can you pack some shirts? Give them to Brian. He'll bring them on the plane and and drop them off to the Groovy Movie thing. Whatever." He takes two huge hockey bags like that. Kevin puts his equipment in, and they're stuffed to the gills with shirts. So I can't even lift them. One is 96 pounds, and the other was like like almost 80 pounds, right? So I get there. I'm already running late. Um, and then there's uh, – I have to – the guy goes, well, you can upgrade. If you pay $70, you upgrade. Um, then you won't have to uh, pay an extra like 200 for the additional fees because the goddamn bags are so heavy, right? right? And I was like, all right, well, I guess I'll upgrade. I ended up in the fucking second to last row anyway, so I don't know what the upgrade was. But he's sliding my card, and my card won't work. Like, it just, like, it keeps, it the keeps credit getting... Card? Yeah, it, it just wouldn't work. And I said, well, can I pay in cash? And um, he goes, yeah. And I said, well, I have $80. How much is it? And it was $70. Now, when I tell you this took 25 minutes to complete this uh-huh. process, and I'm sweating, and I'm like, what do I do with these extra shirts? Because it's still too heavy. I know, man. I'm fucking, <laughs> I've been sick for like a week. Fucking, now I'm, I'm, getting, I'm just thinking about it, man. I'm fucking I'm reliving it. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I guess I should just throw out fucking 40 pounds of shirts, right? But instead, I, the guy helps me make a plastic bag. It's so ghetto. It's like this giant plastic bag that I fill with shirts and then fashion into like a little suitcase so I can use it as a carry-on. Um, so when all that's said and done, and I'm telling you, it took 25 minutes, um, I say to the guy, I'm like, look, I'm, I'm sorry. Like all I ha- This is all the cash I have. I said, thanks for helping me. And I give him $10. He's literally looking at the $10 and looking at me and he goes, well, I guess this will be my good deed for the day. And then, like, takes the $10 and fucking walks away. I wouldn't even think he had to tip him. <clears throat> um, but I'm kind of clueless in this. He, he went out. He really went. Yeah, you should tip him. Why? Isn't um, he doing his job? Tip? What's that? Well, isn't that him doing his job, though? Kind of. Like, I, I mean, what, what, he where, definitely what, went out of his way where, what, what? Where do you tip and where do you don't? Like, you don't tip the gas station attendant, do you? No. Some people do. But well, back in the day when they liked your windshield, some and people all that still other do. Stuff. I would never. I would right, never. but so how do you know when to do it and when not to do it, though? Um, I guess there are certain times. Well, remember you got all up in my grill because I gave the subway sandwich girl a dollar. Well, you were we're, giving <laughs> you were giving money to them every every stop on the way to uh, to uh, <coughs> when we drove out to do the to the tour. We were doing yeah. the tour. Right, every so fucking like- hick. Gas stop. We stopped that. He was giving all his money away to all the girls. Yeah, I'm like kicking on my heels like I'm a rich oil western tycoon and shit. And I was just like, why are you? Every time we stop, are you giving out tens to these <laughs> to, to anybody working behind a counter? I'm like, do you work here? Fucking here, take ten dollars. <laughs> a four dollar sandwich. <laughs> No, it was – but somebody like that, usually it's like a like a dollar or two per bag if right. you do like curbside check-in. And I have to say like this dude did go out of his way. He did make me a little uh, well, well, How much more did he bag. think he was going to get from you? I don't know. I don't know why he thought he would get more than $10 knowing full well that's all I had. Right. Maybe, he's, maybe he knew who you were. Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. It didn't appear that way. Um And uh, – uh, but I really was just like – I was just wanted to fucking be like – Asshole, like you've been through, you've been through this entire fucking ordeal with me. You know I only have ten dollars. Like what? I, I'm. What is your expectation? Like what do you want? Like what do you? I don't understand what it is you want. Twenty dollars. I guess I think he wanted. He might have wanted some of those shirts. Why? Well, they are valuable things. I don't know. He told me not to throw them away. He was like, "I'll take them," and I was like, "All right." But then. Instead, he helped me make the suitcase. How um how shallow is this? Um, there's a restaurant, and it seems that every time I go to this restaurant, I don't go there that often. 
up in North Jersey with my family. Um, it's one. It's all, and one of the only like the handful of times since um, since the show Comic Book Men that I've ever been noticed anywhere. But I've had like the manager or the waiter um, ask me, "Are you that guy?" And that definitely uh, plays a part in how much I tip. Then you got to tip oh, more. Yeah. You got to tip more, right? Oh, yeah. without a doubt. But why though? Why? Know. Why? Just cause, why? I though? used to see Kevin do that and think like that's nuts. But then once the other show started and people were like, "Oh, hey, you're so and so." Yeah, I definitely. Tip why more. though? But I'm just, I'm just, I'm just falling into that mindless sheep though attitude of like, well, they recognize me. I don't want them to think I'm a dickhead. But like, why? Who cares? Who uh, cares if the waiter thinks like that? I'm that I'm cheap. I'm going to give him a tip anyway. Yeah. There, I give a tip all the time, twenty percent. Right. But I, but I gave like thirty percent because of this guy recognized me. Though I don't know. We should bring in a psychologist and try to figure this. I out. think it's. I think it's. It's natural. Completely natural. Yeah, you know, I mean, he's a fan. The show is exciting. No, I didn't say he was yeah. a fan. Oh, he didn't say he was he a fan. He wasn't a fan. <laughs> I haven't met a fan yet other than in here. Really? Yeah. Oh, well, then fuck him. I want to give him 15 People that recognize you. <laughs> yeah, being recognized and that guy being a fan are not the same yeah. thing. Yeah. Uh, and what do the girls do? Are the girls like, do they they think it's weird or not at all? Uh, They just kind of just like, they don't really react to it. They don't really say anything. They just kind of like, they just want to like it to not exist. Yeah. Yeah. And I agree with them. I uh, wish it wouldn't exist like either. I could go back down to 20%. <laughs> <laughs> Man, <that'd be> sweet. <laughs> because the guy asked me for my picture too. And then that really freaked them out. Really? Yeah. I just look at them. I look at them and I smile. And they just are like, they don't know how to react. And, and thankfully, it's not, like I said, a handful of times. I wouldn't want to be. I wouldn't want to be. I mean, like, it would be a nightmare to be like Kevin, where you can't take two steps. Mm -hmm. I would really hate it. I mean, that I would really hate it. That would be awful. Or can you imagine if you were like a Michael Jackson level, where he had to fucking. <laughs> or did you ever hear that story where he would go I around in a, a Michael Jackson level? And he, had to, well, he had to go around sedated. in a limo, like a, a, a blackened window, and just watch people because he didn't know how real people acted. Him and Brooke Shields. Really? Yeah, they would as teens together? they would rent a limo and then just drive around with black windows and watch people from afar to see how <laughs> the normal people acted. Because you're that recognizable that like you can't do anything. I mean, I, I mean, great. It's great to have all that fame and all that money, but if you have to live such a fucked up life, though, is it, what is it really worth it? I think Brooke Shields still has to do that. I think who's to do it these days? Like I a, think a Justin Bieber. Well, oh, well, look at what happens to that girl that Ming was all hot for. She's totally crazy. Holy fucking shit! It, it definitely changed. It definitely like affected her brain. I just, I love the. It's just like you wish it could be there in that moment where the cops come in. She rushes across the room and throws a bong out the window, and then insists that there was no bong. <laughs> Isn't it crazy though that like he's the one that like he he called like he went out of his way as somebody that nobody was on nobody's radar, nobody's radar at all, and right. he was like I like her she's normal, and then like a month later she was totally like <laughs> schizo crazy, was so quick yeah, <laughs> and so absolute. Yeah. What was her name? Amanda Bynes. Yeah, that's it. He was like, remember he like he wouldn't stop telling Sunday Jeff how much he infatuated he was with her. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Sunday Jeff was like, are we going to talk about baseball now <laughs> <laughs> on our hockey show? He just wanted to talk about anything other than like Ming having a semi-erect penis talking about <laughs> talking about Amanda Vines. <laughs> He's got a semi. <laughs> she's, a, she's a cute girl. I mean, I won't <clears throat> I won't um, disagree with her. Maybe she, she could lose a couple pounds. Mm. Um. This is one fatty to another, Amanda, if you're listening. You don't want to get stuck in a tub. It's happened to me. <laughs> um, but it, it couldn't be – it couldn't be on purpose, right? She's not looking at Lindsay Lowen and thinking like, well, wow, she gets a lot of attention. No, I, I think probably I she has um, some sort of um, mental issues at this point. She's got to. She's got or, to. And, uh, and it probably would have happened anyway even without a TV show, but – it doesn't help the fact that she's having this meltdown and people are actually paying attention to it and, and reporting it, though. Because like, there's millions of people are having meltdowns yeah. and nobody gives a fuck. Right. I've had like three today. Nobody cared. <laughs> yeah. And that's the way it should be. <laughs> yeah. I should be throwing bongs out the window all day. Nobody gives a fuck. Um, 
But, but yeah, that that's the thing. It's like it's – with her, it's not even like – I mean, she's not really relevant, right? She's not no, at all. As not at all. This is how she's relevant right now. <laughs> yeah. Q, you were, yeah, did you fear that or do you fear that? Getting to a stage where you have a meltdown and then people are going to report on it? Or so. Uh, no. No? I don't think so. I, I think you've I'm, been you've been close to getting caught in some precarious situations already. Getting caught in? What yeah. do you mean? Like on the road, you know, partaking in dangerous behavior. What stealing a flag would make? Like I said, it was twelve years ago. Yes, if you want to count that, <laughs> dude. I'm the most down. I'm the most boring person on the road. Like I just shows over. More boring than me on the road. You've been on the road with me. I'm probably equal with you now. Now, after the show's over, I go right to my room and I'm I'm done. I'm Good done. boy. Yeah, it's over for me. You know, party. Mm-mm. No meets, no greets. Uh, occasionally, very, very occasionally these days, like I'll go, but it's got to strike you in the moment, uh, you know, and just be like, go. Oh, but my my basic MO is just hotel room and just relax and sleep. Which is good. It is good. I had my days. I had my you, days you, of uh, party. It's too much. Like especially like. People who come to the shows for us, like, I just don't want to talk about me, and I don't want to talk about the TV show, and that's all people, because they don't know anything about you besides that. Well, that's up to you to let them show the other, the softer side of Q. Oh, we're going to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Four-minute conversation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a lot you can Tell learn the from other somebody. Jokers. Tell the other jokers, like, this show, <clears throat> I'm just going to give, a, like, a, basically a history. Right. I cannot BQ, tell you. My oh, hopes sorry. and dreams. <laughs> I cannot <laughs> tell you how many people come into the store, though. And we'll bring up a conversation they had with Kevin where they saw another side of him yeah. that is so meaningful to them Yeah, that you are depriving the people who are coming out to see you or paying good money <laughs> to see you by not giving them that – that giving them that little insight into the real you yeah. that they would cherish, I that don't. people would cherish. They can listen to Tell Them Steve Dave if they want an insight into the real me. It's too much work. They got to download yeah. it. They got to so find they, it. Now it's on them. <laughs> <laughs> I got to fucking hang out and have four minute conversations with four minutes strangers. is too much. Yeah, it is too. much. I saw you re- to respond to somebody pretty harshly about that. They were just like, and I think it was you said that Frank Sinatra do something. Uh, did he go out of his way? You, you compare himself to Frank Sinatra <laughs> Did on Twitter? Did you say something about Frank Sinatra? Oh People <laughs> said. <laughs> Am I right about this? Did you use, uh, use yeah. Frank Sinatra as an example? Somebody said, well, no. I mean, it, trust me, when the facts come out, I think you'll find I compare myself to Frank Sinatra. All right. All right. So let's Stein. paint the picture here. So what did someone tweet to you? Somebody put, um, they were like, why didn't you watch that video I sent you? A link. <laughs> And I was like, what are you talking about? I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? Someone made like, a video in your honor and you couldn't be bothered to no, watch they, it? Like they, the they best of Q clips? They, they sent the YouTube link. They sent the YouTube link of a fucking cat on a treadmill. And I didn't see it. It wasn't even like I saw the link. Who Frank Sinatra time to watch no. a fucking cat on a fucking treadmill? And That's my like, question to you. And they were like, well, they were like, well, I remember when entertain, I remember a time when entertainers, when entertainers, like, uh, appreciated, appreciated their fans. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, yeah, I guess I remember that. And I remember when fucking Frank Sinatra spent days on Twitter, like, talking about bullshit. I didn't consider, I didn't compare myself to Sinatra. <laughs> uh, they get, they but get. there's expectations. You have to, I mean, you wanted this lifestyle. You wanted it. Right. Now you got to, you got to step up and take the responsibility of watching all the bullshit uh, people send you. <laughs> That's not true <laughs> at all. I'm not beholden to everybody's fucking whim. Not at all. But you're. But you got to remember, you're not. You're not Brian Quinn to them. You're Q right. from. You're Q and Practical Joker. I mean, you're zany. Okay. You're friendly. You're. You're. You want. Zany. You want. They, people think of you as their friend. That's okay. You're. You're their TV friend. Yeah, but if they think <laughs> TV friend is fine, but if somebody thinks. That they're my friends because they watch the show. They're unbalanced. Really? And about all the people that – I cannot tell you also about all the people who come right in. Oh, my God. Letters that people have given me sealed in the store. They were embarrassed. To, they Please don't read it while I'm here. Okay. About the podcast. Yes. How they have – they have their friends have fallen to the wayside. You know, they're at a point in their life where they're so busy with their family or work that they don't have time for their friends. Right. And like these – Pods 
have become um, like we've become their friends. Okay. You're being uh, a bad friend. <laughs> are, are you going to go are you going to sit here right now and say that that those people aren't are a little bit off in, in that in that mindset? No, I think that they're acting appropriately. They're writing you a letter and being like, "Hey, read this. Enjoy it." <laughs> like they're not saying did Frank Sinatra read letters? <laughs> this is not- <laughs> I mean, they're, they're not saying they're not saying you, you know you you're fucked because they they come in here and you're here. There's nothing yeah. you can do. There, there's a lot. Of, I, I can't I can't escape a lot of um, right. FaceTime. Right. There's nowhere I can run to unless I say, yeah, you know what? You really I need to go subterranean. Like you have to go into the basement <laughs> and hide. But you know what? But I got and I'll be 100 percent honest with you. When someone comes in and says they love comic book men, and then they say, but I love T- TSD more. Yeah. It's nice. That's better. Yeah. To me, that's I don't know why. Better. I don't know why. Because it's, I mean, Tom Steve Dave is like completely driven by us. It, it is us. It's whatever we want it to be. It always will be whatever we want it to be. And comic book men is not whatever you want it to be. It's, 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 this is three of us. Like Impractical Jokers is fucking a team of people. Notes from Is it corporate? Can you say right here? Is Impractical Jokers corporate at this point? Have you sold out? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my God, yeah. Well, that I can answer. (laughs) That's easy. (laughs) The second I did a fucking commercial for, uh, I don't know, fucking. Integrity is, is, is integrity an issue at this point? I mean, in that is it, a, is it no, but is it is it a is it a topic where like you guys ponder things other based on like well is, there is yeah okay uh, we we've not done things we've said no to things that we don't feel like we, we're doing commercial now for an upcoming movie and like they were like say like if you love our show you'll love this and blah 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 and I was like I'm not gonna say that because I, I don't I haven't seen this movie I'm not gonna say that they're gonna love it if they love our show and but isn't that what advertisers are are asking you to do with any product you push though. Are you no. just trying to be difficult to be difficult? No, with no, no. <laughs> I don't know. Like the Kellogg's commercial we do, we're just doing bits from the show using Kellogg's as a prop. Like that's fine to right. me. You know what I mean? But what about on the podcast though? Well, we, we have pushed products that I know you haven't sampled. Yeah, but we've ripped – we've pulled that out. <laughs> I was like, that's integrity. Being like, look, we're going to fucking try this. Um, like the Shaq show, they had us do commercials for that and we said no. We were like, look. You wouldn't do it. We won't do it. We'll do We'll do – intros for them but we're not going to sit here and be like you guys got to watch that show it's fucking funny and blah 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 because we're like we've never seen the show i was like i'm not gonna do that what if it sucks i was like then it's my name out there saying and besides let's fucking shack do a commercial for my show like fuck that shit <laughs> fuck it look at, look at that head <laughs> swell it up bigger than shack it's not small enough. I'm not, look, I'm not, if I if I have to do something for a basketball fucking thing, clearly Shaq is thing. But if we both have shows on True TV, it's like why am I doing a commercial for him? And he's and his ratings aren't as good as mine. So like in the fucking world of TV on uh, TV shows on True TV, like you're Shaq. I'm the Shaq, right? Mm-hmm. I'm the fucking Shaq. That's it. It's like, but you know, how's Q's ass taste, Shaq? Yeah, <laughs> suck it, Shaq. <laughs> <laughs> you guys know what I'm referring to, right? Yeah, yeah. I, mean, yeah. <clears throat> a rap? Oh, I thought it was a real line. You know, like he actually said it in an interview. It was a rap he did. I thought he did a rap, and he's like, "It was to Kobe Bryant." Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna steal that line from my rap to Ming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, let me look it up real fast. Yeah, I thought I thought it was part of his rap. I, I just couldn't believe that, like you know, that he said that, and then because it's pretty, it's pretty vulgar. That's my, my ass, ass taste. Yeah. yeah. And then he's still a beloved, like, celebrity, though, and he's pushing stuff. I mean, I would think that that's hard to be a pitch man when, you're, you, when, you're have, when, you, when you tread in that kind of dissing uh, in public. Well, I mean, the problem is what Shaq has become is – It has its own – it has its own heading in Wikipedia, mm-hmm. the Shaq-Kobe feud. <laughs> <laughs> like, Shaq has become the product. It's not like when he was a basketball player and like this, the game. Well, they stuff. push him to be this gigantic, lovable teddy bear, right? Sure. So it's hard. And then it's, that teddy bear image is shattered when he's like, how's my ass taste? Right? <laughs> right. I mean, I mean, to me, I'm like, you don't, you can't come back from that and be the teddy bear sure no more. You but you can, though. I'm proven yeah. wrong. America is just like, wow. Well, uh, that's just Shaq being Shaq. It's, it's Shaq. absolutely insane how long it is. The, 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 um, the Wikipedia. The thing. Wikipedia entry, yeah. So I couldn't really – you can't really read it. How's my ass taste? <laughs> <laughs> um, so bizarre. From Urban right? Dictionary. But Shaq um, is, by all accounts, isn't he like a really nice guy? Oh, no, guy? you're right, Walt. 
You're right. It was Kobe. Tell me how my ass tastes. Shaquille O'Neal after Kobe Bryant was destroyed by the Celtics in the 2008 NBA Finals. Mm. Yeah, so it wasn't part of. Hey, what word did you say, Kudo? I said, by all accounts, isn't Shaq like a real? All I've ever heard about is he a real nice guy? Oh, I don't know. Nice I mean, I have no idea. I mean, I'll tell you what. The, the, the people who work at True that I've worked with him have said he's ultra professional and really nice. So, and they don't, and they've told me. Do they say the same things. thing about you? You think? I think so because we are really professional. We are really nice. Like we don't. Okay, no, I'm just yeah, saying, yeah, yeah, I wouldn't. I don't. Because I don't know. I wonder. I wonder if the crew who works with us would say the same thing to outside. Like, well, Walt's really nice, and you know, well, I don't you, know if they'd say that. Really, have to wonder that much. <laughs> 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 well, am I mean? Not to the crew. No, you're not mean. You're not. But mean. I don't know if they'd be like he's really nice. I think they'd be like, I don't know, he's really standoffish. Yeah, I would. I would. They would say that maybe you're aloof. Yeah. But not not like a dickhead or anything. No. So you go. That's okay. Um, Papa John's in trouble. Oh, what happened? I don't know. I just happened to uh, to uh, come across this Papa John's employee racist voicemail lands company in hot water. Wait, what? Papa John? Two Florida the Papa pa- John's employees. Did you you heard about? I didn't this? hear about this. We're fired after accidentally leaving a racist voicemail on the machine of a customer who allegedly tipped him poorly. <laughs> now, see, this sucks for black people because black people already got the the uh, the the bad rap of like tipping poorly to begin with, Do they? right? Yeah, I never heard that. Uh, I, I've never heard that either. Really? Yeah, that's what um, like strippers say that, and anybody who's any um, waitress or servitor. Um, if you ask them, they will say that black people don't tip as well. Really? This is what I've heard. Is that why cab drivers, they always say, you know, they won't pick up black people, cab drivers? No, I think that's because they don't want to get shot or something. Like, they're afraid, like, you know, it's racism on, like, a whole different Uh, fucking uh, level. (laughs) Right. Um, On May 19th, a black Papa John's customer from Sanford, Florida, received a message on his iPhone, allegedly from a man who had just delivered his pizza. Apparently, the Papa John's employee didn't realize he had butt-dialed the customer and proceeded to leave an N-word written racist voicemail complaining about the tip. Mm. But he didn't mean to do it. He did, well, he, he didn't mean to tell him. Right. Now, is Papa John should be in trouble? I mean, as long as those guys are fired, isn't Papa John's in the clear? This is what the employee says on the butt dial. That's the only requirement for being an N-word. Yeah, they gave me five bucks there. Fine. Outstanding African-American gentleman five of bucks? the community. That's, That's a, a lot. That's a, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't give five bucks to the pizza man. I give him like three dollars. Wow, man. Oh, and then he makes up a song using mainly the N-word about him. The customer posted the racist Papa John's voicemail online in the video. Papa John's pizza sucks anyway. I don't know why the fuck anyone would order it. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the video, the customer says his pizza cost fifteen twenty six, adding that he gave a twenty one percent tip. He detailed his shock and disgust in the video's description. I wouldn't even know who to call. Like, if if some like it seems like whenever shit like this happens, people always know who to call. Like, they know how to get through to like the Huffington Post or 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 um, say the the Daily News or whatever. Like, if somebody like butt dialed me and they were like, "Hey, I just delivered um, a pizza to a fatty," and he was <laughs> stuck in his tub and he couldn't even pay me. Um, who who would I call? How do I get how do I get a hold of somebody to well, to, to listen to my story? Yeah, I don't know. Who would never? And if you gave him five shit? bucks, that's not twenty one percent. That's closer to like thirty percent, right? How? Wait, now I'm confused. How much are you supposed to tip a pizza guy, fucking fast food guy? I mean, a uh, food delivery guy. Hold on, I'll tell you. Because you gotta, you gotta. Be now careful. I'm worried. I'm doing something wrong. Pizza delivery tip. Okay, come on now. All right, how much should I tip the police, uh, the pizza delivery guy? According to Slate Magazine, um, hold on, Jesus Christ Almighty. Last month it came to light on Reddit that someone paid a $10 tip on a $1,400 pizza order. Wow, that's a little low. That seems, yeah. Uh, rule of thumb, $2 minimum per pie. But. What the fuck? Why can't they just tell you? Why does the article have to be four pages long? I don't know. What do you give them? Three bucks? Well, let's yeah. see what I get one pie. I, I give like $3 because it's like like 12 bucks and change. Right. I'll give them 15 That's pretty yeah, good. That's all right. Yeah. It sounds all right to me. I don't know how much more. Yeah. 
I don't know. I'm not worried about it. You ran into you saw how I ran into the problem with. Oh, here you go. I can tell you all kinds of different ones. The food delivery person, ten percent of the bill. Um, fifteen to twenty percent for a difficult delivery. How much you? How much you tip your barber, Q? Barber. Yeah. Jesus Christ, dude! I haven't. Uh, I do fifty percent. Fifty percent. Wow. Oh. Yeah. To make a confession yeah, about barbers, <laughs> I cannot tell you how like how awesome it feels to get a haircut. Right? Like I, that's like one thing I love the feeling of getting a haircut. Yeah, yeah. Even if it's a dude cutting you my hair, a seven. really? Yeah, really? Yeah, it's it's unbelievable. That that's the most relaxing. I don't know if it's it's not really sexual. I don't think. Even no, though, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> boy, do I love to get a haircut. Though. Yeah, yeah, feels good. I always wanted to get like an old school. They're opening up like around Manhattan now. Old school barbers. Yeah, I don't think they're as gentle or as, or as as um, as relaxing. I think they're more like uh, they're a little bit more rougher. The old, if you like the yeah. rough, if you like it rough, I don't yeah, know. slap you around a little bit, <laughs> cut your hair all on. There's, there's old school barbers in Red Bank. Yeah, yeah, yeah right down like the street. Get a shave and shit like that. Put a hot towel and shit. Oh yeah, Rockies, right? Yeah. Well, there's one over there. I went to the one down the street, the old world barber. The motherfucker wouldn't stop answering his texts. Somebody... <laughs> so it wasn't old world at all. <laughs> no, not really. Yeah, not that much. Yeah. All right. So that's fucking. Don't butt dial your pizza guy and and uh, fucking call him the N word. It's not cool. Mm. <laughs> uh, did you um? You, or were you a fan of Arrested Development? Q. Oh yeah. Did you watch any of the episodes? I watched the first four episodes. What are you thinking? I'm a little, a little concerned mm-hmm. because it's not. You can't go home again. No, I, I don't know, man. Like I, I, I'm hoping that it. I'm not used to the one character per episode format. Yeah, and it's really. I have to grow. But I tell you what, I did rewatch the pilot and I liked it a lot more the second time. So I don't. Have, know. Did you watch the series while at Rest Development? I watched it. I haven't watched this new stuff though. Yeah. Do you have Netflix? Nope. Yeah. You can watch it if you have Netflix. Yeah, I wasn't so um, I wasn't so hot on it. Did you watch the whole thing? No, oh. uh, it's it's a lot. It's, it's hard, like, man. It's hard to um, to pick up and, and and capture that that energy that was there. How many years ago? Seven, five, uh, probably three years ago now. No way. No, when did that bad. end? Oh yeah, it was longer than that. I it was yeah. Seven years. <laughs> yeah. Seven years ago. <laughs> wow. I thought I thought it was two thousand five. No. Oh, you're right. I'm telling you, man, it's it's diff- that's a tough task. And if they can if they can even get like half as good a show as it was, I would think that they yeah. probably accomplished something. I really didn't even like the show that much, so to begin with. The problem I'm finding is that because because I guess because the schedule of everybody, they're doing each episode follows one character the whole episode. There's not a lot of not a lot of interaction. Not a lot of inter- so you have so many new characters that they're introducing to fill in that space. And I'm like, I don't really care about the new characters. Like, I want to see them with each other. On Young's a man now. So, oh, man. I didn't see that episode yeah, yet. Which one was that? Um, that was one I think with Lindsay. Mm. With Lindsay in it. Her. Uh, I don't know. I mean, you know what? Like, could you they imagine tried. if we took seven years off on Comic Book Man and we came back? <laughs> 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 I'm fucking Frank's. We'd have to do. We'd have to do an episode from your hospital bed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> More like my deathbed for seven years from now. Um, how's my ass taste, Ming? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, am I, was that, am I wrong about the? What? Am I wrong about the shack thing? What you think I was wrong? Wrong about that? To do what? To, to do not like, to not pimp it? Well, if your guy is getting more, if you're the guy who's getting more viewers, that's why they came to you to help him out. We did do stuff to help them out. I just didn't want to put we we shot intros for a show, to which I was happy to do. I just didn't want to sit there and be like, "You're gonna love it. It's so funny and shit like that's that." That's tough. That, that's tough to. Um, but I mean, part- because you don't want to sit there and, and it is weird because on one hand you're like, "Am I crazy to think my opinion fucking matters that much to people?" Yes, because I think it's I think it's just in one ear out the other. The sure. viewer is watching. They're never gonna remember like, well. BQ said this. Oh was no! Good. Of course not. Of course not. One I can't thing trust is- anything BQ says anymore. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, also, they didn't pay us to do them. That was the other thing. What do you think of that? Uh, so now I'm just giving, doing it as a favor, giving an opinion. 
Well, I think, you know, you know, maybe down the line, you call in a favor and a Shaq. Shaq doesn't even know I exist. <laughs> or you call in a favor to whoever asked you to do it at True. Yeah, maybe you're setting yourself up, you know, just using that, putting it, banking some uh, some favors in the future. Yeah. Maybe that's why you do it. I don't know. Yeah, but you know what, Walt? If even one, tell him, Steve Dave listener, tunes into Shaq show. And, and says that and they were disappointed with you giving would, it the global that would recommendation. Break my heart. That would break my heart. They're like, what the fuck is up with Q? Yeah. Like, that's where his sense of humor is exactly. at. I, I think that, the, I think, I think the Tell Him Steve Dave listeners are the most intelligent listeners <laughs> of, 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 of any podcast out there. I Agreed. think that they probably have um, the most, um, they get it. Again. And they realize that if Q is pimping Shaq this right. hard, that he's, he probably had to do it. Right. You know, they had him over a barrel. <laughs> True. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that funny? <laughs> they probably Shaq realized. Shaq was fucking off camera with a fucking <laughs> fist ready to fucking nail it. I would have. I, I know. Like I know you said. Like last week we were talking about like how you you get kind of miffed that uh, tell him Steve Dave isn't up there with some of the some of the biggest and brightest of pods. Does isn't mentioned the, in the same breath. Does not get the respect it deserves. I feel. What can we do to change that? I thought about that. That bugged me the last week when we were when I was driving home. That I I, I I was like, well, what can we do to change that? What can we do realistically? I don't. I don't we're going know. back to fucking Collingswood, people. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, well, maybe. well, our audience loves us, so I don't think we need to do anything. To but what can we that. do to break through to that? What what that upper level that we're not at yet in terms of pod respect? I don't Which know. is almost laughable. I, I don't know in itself. <laughs> it is <laughs> laughable. <laughs> respect. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't know. I, I can't. Can you can you really get ponder a real? I mean, with serious ponder right here. Yeah. What do you think it is that's? You well, mean like you got you got show you got two shows that are on TV that the, right. the podcasters who are on the show, which is unique. I don't know if any other right podcast has from them. two different shows from two different networks, right. two different worlds collide every week. Right, it still means fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it that we can't get that that kind of respect that um, other podcasters get? Well, look at look at our shows. I mean, let's be honest with ourselves. Okay, no, that's what I want. They're not fucking classics of television you know what i mean oh okay you mean the, the television yeah, shows like okay our, our shows are like i practical jokers doesn't really get much respect you know what i mean from 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 people and what's what's coming down the pike though that's really scary when you think but we're not getting respect now right and um i think more and more legitimate comedians now are podcasting and yeah. taking that Taking that slice of the what podcasting <laughs> world, and really, like when you got legit comedians now podcasting, right. is there room for the manager of a comic book store, an unemployed guy, and a, a fireman who yeah. and, who doesn't fight fires anymore? I think now more than ever, there's room for that. really, no, really you can't just be the fucking the ha. You really think that you're? You really think that in a world where like the top echelon comedians are now are now don't consider podcasting a joke, and now are now are jumping in right. with both feet. Yeah, there's so much to wade through now to get through to a, to a podcast where the guys on it are not comedians, are not anything. Right. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Real? I mean, sounds like a toast my father gave at my last birthday party. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you think? I mean, meaningless. Real, but no, realistically, though, really, isn't it harder and harder to to try? I mean, if we're trying, if you really want to break through to that to the to the quote unquote the big boys, and I got an email from Declan. And he was over the moon. We're fucked, boys. <laughs> no, no, no. He was over the moon because some other podcast, some echelon, top echelon Mark podcaster Merrick. contacted Merrick, him. Yeah. And he went on to list the podcasts that are the top podcasts in the, in the world. Right. I am so super excited. Well, so am I because I'm fucking part owner of Wiki <laughs> Studios. <laughs> but I mean, but so like, well, how do we get into that realm? That other realm, that other universe well, of podcasters. What Mark Marin does that we don't do and will never do is major celebrity guests. He has had everybody on his show. Same with Hardwick. Same with Hardwick, right? Who's so, Hardwick? The nerdist. The nerdist. The nerdist. Yeah. And nerdist means I thought he was talking about nerd stuff. It's not about nerds. No, I mean it, it's it's not specifically like 
nerd centric, like like nerd fucking like like a game, like a Dungeons and Dragons type game. It's they're just pop culture type shit, I guess. Right. Um, and I guess what I, cause I said to Kevin, I was like, how, I mean, this is how fucking stupid I am. I said to Kevin, I was like, how the fuck does Hardwick get all these people? How does he know all them? And he was like, he has a booker. Like, he, he has people book them <laughs> for the show. Know him? <laughs> it was like, I was like, he hasn't really been in that many things. I was like, how could he have this many fucking friends in Hollywood? He put money into it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that's the case. We will never have that. Yeah, we why we could get have. a booker. We could we could get, sure, a booker, we get a booker, but to get people to come down to the store, <laughs> <laughs> why it might be a little bit difficult. Skype. They could Skype then. Sure, but it wouldn't be our show anyway. Like who, who are we going to talk to? You know what I mean? Like who? Like he has. Who's the last person in Hardwick or anybody Hardwick's had on? Yeah, I'll go look at him. Rob right. Zombie. Oh. Come but you said it yourself. You have Rob Zombie in here. You're not going to be you. You're not going to fucking right. bust on him. I know. But so, so are you saying the only way to achieve what the top cod podcasters in the world have achieved is to have celebrities come on? I think it's a route. Maybe not the only route. What, what are some other routes then that we could explore? But, I mean, here's the thing. You're talking about – because we have our audience and our listeners are fucking – we have a loyal lot. We have a large loyal lot. We do. And I'd rather have that because I th- I bet you what Mark, any Mark Marins that I've listened to or even the Nerdist that I've listened to have always been guest related. I've always been like, oh, I like this guy. Let me let me give a listen. Do they have? Do you think that they have that hardcore crowd? I, I don't I don't know, but I don't think I don't think so. John Who? Fogarty was the last person on. Um, John on Fogarty is that the, like a sixty year old rocker? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now we'll see. Let's see who was the last person Hardwick had on. Let's um. See. But I understand what I understand, and, and um, it, it is kind of like looking at the looking, you know, keeping up with the Johnsons kind right. of mentality here. Uh-huh. Not 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 the Johnsons at this table, <laughs> but <laughs> but um, there is a, like you're always looking for the grass is always greener sure. the attitude. But the way Declan was so excited to, that this guy actually talked to him made me go like. Well, I talk to this fucker every week. He don't seem that impressed. Yeah, we used to be the fucker. <laughs> he recognized me as a human being. Oh. I can die happy. This no, I'm happy for him. I'm happy for him. I'm, uh, I'm 100% happy. Well, let's see how fucking Mark Barron deals with photos of cats coming to his phone at 2 in the morning. Let's see if he fucking wants to keep up with that. And I'm happy for Declan, and I'm happy that he was excited, but... I, like I would love to figure out what we got to do to to get into that next bit of stratosphere to get that respect you you so rightfully deserve Q and crave. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know what? I, actually, it's funny because I had sort of the opposite reaction. Walt, I thought about it since last week too, and I just came to a place where I was like, eh, I don't well, know. that's just your that's just your old. You're the old Q way kicking in, you know, of like, I don't give a fuck. Who cares? Life sucks. Yeah. What's this? Get on a treadmill. <laughs> so no. But like when you, but when you go, I'm but when you're in God. your, <laughs> but you're in one of your, but when, if you're having one of your good episodes and you're like, and you have some positive energy though, you may, you may want to like yeah, break I mean, through. I think I really just want, here's the problem that I have with us. Isn't, isn't, <laughs> isn't really that, that thing. It's like, I don't feel we serve. Our audience as best we can, and I'd like to do that. I'd, I'd love to work on that. Changing, changing what would do that though? How do we serve our audience better? That that small but extremely loyal and extremely, I guess, um, r- rabid. They're rabid for I'd some of them. Are, some sure, of them are rabid. Uh, I would like to do like a few more live shows. I'd like to put like some more special mm. episodes out there for them and stuff <laughs> like that. Well, you're asking me. You're not asking me <laughs> Live shows. You know, I don't just, think that's it, though. Just things that special we're episodes. Good, we're good about doing a show weekly. We're really good at that, like, right? For the most part, I just feel like they're like oh, the the tweets I get. Where can I get a T-shirt? Where you know this would be cool. all the ideas we come up with. Like this would be cool. This would be cool that we never really ever deliver on. Like I would like to deliver on that stuff, but. Part of the Tell Em Steve Dave charm is not delivering on certain things, so it's all, yeah, you know, it's that charm. It's not even charm. That it's, not it's, charming anymore. <laughs> it's more now. It's more like you're you're losing people who are just like eh, I've had enough. Yeah. I've heard. I've seen. I seen it yesterday. I I had to put out um, a request for um, like I said the polling thing, and I was mm. scrolling through some things. People are like, hey, I I used to I used to 
feel bad about missing episodes of Tell Them Steve Dave. They don't. Some people have moved on. I guess it happens, but you know, is it you know? I, I, I mean, there was a time. <laughs> there was a time when people like it was so important to them they would listen right away. Now that there's a lot of people who don't listen anymore. Yeah. Because we, we, we don't have celebs. We don't have celebs. We don't have celebs. We never should have turned down Rob Zombie. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what. Like the, we could never be big because, like when I was well, when I was in St. Louis, getting ready for the show, I was so fucking tired, and I just wanted to lay down. And I get a fucking text from Declan, <laughs> and there's a guy. Brad Hollingsworth, I don't know if you, 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 you might see him on Twitter. He's constantly fucking tweeting shit like, uh, put, a, put, put, put a picture of Pam and Edgar up, put a picture of Pam and Edgar up, I just ignore him. Right. Um, but I get a, t- a, a text from Declan that Brad Hollingsworth is outside the theater. <laughs> He's supposed to be on a list. He can't get in. Uh, can I help him out? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, could you like, imagine him t- t- texting that to Mark Marion? If I, yeah, mm-hmm. is Mark Marin? Is, is, are you going to send that to fucking Mark Mark Marin? <laughs> Brad Hollingsworth is outside oh. the theater. He's alone. He's got no one just like me. I know how it feels. Please get Brad Hollingsworth into the theater. Did you get him in? Of course. <laughs> I have to. I'm not, and, and it turned out the dude was actually pretty awesome. He was like the best audience fucking member there. Uh, but it's like I just – I see that and I can't be that that dickhead that's like, fuck him. Who cares? Like it doesn't have anything to do with me. Well, Declan does so much for us too. It's hard to be like – I'm thinking about the Brad Hollingsworth guy, not Declan. Oh, okay. Fuck Declan. <laughs> oh, that hurts. Yeah. Speaking of something that's going to sting mm. – we have a uh, celeb of sorts that wants to visit the set of Impractical Jokers because he's a, a huge fan. Really? Yeah. You're not going to like it. I'm not going to like who the celeb is? No. Ooh, and you're going to let him come, huh? You're going to let him visit. Well, you'll you'll talk to him about it after I tell you, and then you let me know. It's a Rob Zombie. <laughs> no. <laughs> who is it? Oh, he's a friend from the Stern Show? Oh, Richard? Rich, Chris- Rich Christie? Richard Christie, yeah. yeah. He's yeah. a celebrity? Well, he's a, <laughs> he's a celebrity friend. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. He used to be uh, before the Impractical Joker stole him away. <laughs> I heard that. I started laughing. I was like, yeah, bring him out. <laughs> well, you know what? Maybe pe- maybe there's other people out there. Maybe there's people out there who who have uh, ideas that we haven't ever thought of to get us to that next level. You know, we'll take Clearly, them on. Like Mark Marin and like, <laughs> well, these guys, these are also guys like they did stand up for a, for a long time. That's what I'm talking about. Man. Yeah, like stand Hardwick, is... Hardwick was in the stand up circles. He was coming up with like Sarah Silverman and yeah. and uh, Brian Posehn and all those guys. You know, they got their little There's... elite fucking clicks. Mm. Oh, they do. We can't fucking break in. No. Well, it's not up to them though. If we, we break force in. our way in, yeah. I mean, you put out a pod We're that's so Posehn. good. You, if you put out a pod that's so good that you like, you cannot be denied entry into that into that next level of mm-hmm. potting. I I would put our podcast up against any other podcast in the world, any other one. Me too. Yeah, without a doubt. I yeah. listen. To, I listen to other podcasts, and I'm like, it doesn't strike me that like, look, I like Chris. I think he's a he's a nice dude and everything, but I don't listen to that and be like, oh my god, he's fucking reinvented the wheel. All right. All right. Well, I was like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to do anything differently. Status anyway. quo is good enough for you guys. Well, no, I mean, you, you, you know, Fuck yeah, <laughs> that's what's, that's what the problem is, though. <laughs> I think. Well, well, you know, I was busy today. I was working today. I, I have. I'm in the midst of a of a spurt of energy of energy. Yeah. yeah. So I, I think that if I can maintain it for another week and a half, I'll have a set up for some good things uh, in the ne- for the next few months. Nice. So all I'm, right, I'm in the midst of it. So we'll see what happens. Celebrity guest? No, I don't care about that. I don't care if we ever have a celebrity. On. The, I'll tell you who's celebrity enough for me on this show is Monster Magnet. Yeah, he's all the celebrity I need on this show. And Sal Volcano. I wrote TV's to um, yeah, Super Eight Sal. <laughs> um, I wrote to um, Bill Burr. His he's going to be at the Count Basie. Oh yeah. Tomorrow, yeah, and I wrote, I wrote to see if he wanted to come on the show, and nobody ever responded. <laughs> <laughs> and who, who is this guy? Is he's a comedian. He's a comedian. Yeah, that's what I'm talking. He has his own podcast, right? He does. He does it by himself. 
it's like called the Monday Morning Podcast. Oh, okay. And he does. I, I thought that he might fit in well because he likes sports a lot. Oh, yeah. I thought, yeah, I thought like you could talk sports with him and shit. But but that's what I'm saying. In this world where podcasting is becoming the new medium for, sure. for comedians, I don't know if there's room for Tell Him Steve Dave um, – in the comedy um, category for awards in the we future. we got to go political. Yeah, what do you think we should do? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what we can do, but I, I think that may be um, – I think that may be lofty goals in, in a world where you got to compete against a professional comedian. Right, like Seinfeld's We're toast. podcast. We're toast. Yeah, we are toast. But why? They can't take us off. We can't get canceled. <laughs> Like we could, we could Kevin do this. could cancel us in a heartbeat. Kevin, Kevin <laughs> wouldn't cancel us, but even if Kevin did, well, I mean, how would Kevin cancel us? He would say, "I, I don't, you know what I'm saying." But I know you're right. They can't get, we can't right. be canceled. But the, but the audience members can cancel us. They can oh, yeah. unsubscribe to us in a heartbeat. In a heartbeat, <laughs> Mark Mary kicked us off the podcasting <laughs> waves. <laughs> <laughs> I told him to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I said, good idea, Mark. <laughs> Those boys use the same jokes over and over again. They're not like you, Mark. <laughs> oh, what's that, the paper bag you got for me? <laughs> Badly. <laughs> if you're thinking of doing a podcast, definitely... You know, Creaky Studios is the place to get it <laughs> to get it done because Declan just knows his I, shit. I wholeheartedly agree, man. Yeah. This, me and him have been doing some stuff, and oh um, my god, did you listen to it? Are, are we running that this episode? Yeah, yeah. Oh well, now's a good time to do it. Did you did okay. you hear the commercial for, this, um, for, shave, for Dollar, Dollar Shave, shave Club dot com? No, did? I didn't hear you. Oh my All right. god! So Dec, we're gonna play this for Brian, and you just you just insert the. Um, the real commercial so it doesn't sound shitty. It's fucking unbelievable, dude. You ready? Yeah, I just want to make sure everything's still running here. Okay. Uh, oh, shit. Where is it? Okay. Oh, shit, dude. It's funny. I, I was in the Indiana airport. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> That's not it. That's Grand Funk. That's why you'll never be Mark Barron. <laughs> <laughs> well, that got them beyond, not Grand Funk. Uh, all right. Meet Sunday Jeff. Sunday Jeff is Dollar Shave, and Dollar Shave is one smooth mother. Three million bucks worth of diamonds, Dollar Shave. Maybe more. But you know, man, it's the biggest diamond broker on the East Coast. You want me to steal from the syndicate? You crazy, honky. They say there's no more folk crazy enough to pull it off, Dollar Shave. Fuck that. Dollar Shave is a local motherfucker. Later, Mama. I got places to be, peoples to see. But Dollar Shave, I was going to flip over and let you shave something else. <laughs> Not by the little hairs on your chinny-chin-chin. You stole three million dollars worth of Wendy's ice, and baby, that's cold. You think you've got what it takes to be a Dollar Shave man? If you do, go to dollarshaveclub.com slash T-E-S-D. Dollar Shave has made it so simple. Every month you get a new pack of razors and every week you change your blade and it costs a fraction of what you pay at retail. They made it simple. High quality razors, 100% guaranteed. Sent on schedule so you never have to think about it again. Want to try it? Go to dollarshaveclub.com slash T-E-S-D. You get a free sample of Dr. Carver's Easy Shave Butter, which is awesome with your first shipment. Support this show. Go to dollarshaveclub.com slash T-E-S-D or click the Dollar Shave Club banner on the T-E-S-D show page at smodcast.com. Again, that's dollarshaveclub.com slash T-E-S-D and be a Dollar Shave man like Sunday Jeff. Well, first I'll say it'll definitely distract from the Papa John's racism. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> full brunt will be on us now. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, that was just like um, gonna get you, sucker. An homage to right, all those right, great yeah. black exploitation movies. I like it. Who who did the voice? It's obviously somebody Jeff. And who who's the woman? Uh, that was somebody Ming knew. Somebody Ming knew. Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm the crackhead. You're the crackhead? You didn't know oh, that was I didn't me? I know that was you. Yeah, I'm the crackhead. Oh, that's so great. <laughs> <laughs> that Sunday Jeff the whole time doing that voice? Doing that... No, that the real crackhead? Like the $3 no, the... million dollars worth of diamonds. Mm-hmm. That was me. Uh, no, no, that that I know is you, but the one doing the deep voice. Oh, no, no, that was Tim from Across the Street, Jax. Oh, that was Tim doing oh, that? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I was like, wow, it hardly sounds like Sunday Jeff at all. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, that's a highly produced commercial. Uh-huh. That's Declan. That's Creaky Studios, man. He could do that for you. Yeah. He could do that for your pot if you got shit to pimp. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to let you shave something else. <laughs> <laughs> there is a there is a commercial. Oh, God good. damn it. Let me see if I can find it. It was so incredibly... Um, hold on a second here. Me... People, rightfully so, can't get enough of Sunday Jeff. I can't either. Yeah. I can understand it. Like I get, I get him like one on one from time to time, and if you know, and I still can't get enough. So I can understand why right. the listeners like are it, feel deprived and have a. It's a great fix. commercial. <laughs> Anybody else? It's not as great though. It's oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like if I put Ming in there, it wouldn't yeah, be the same. Not at all. I can't remember the name of the fucking product now. I'm sorry, but it was. It is such an incredibly racist commercial it's like two guys talking and i can't it was on stern the, just recently but it was like one of those like dating service oh wait it was it's a dating service they match you up with exactly who like, you're like hey i'm i'm brian quinn i'm looking for a girl who uh likes to cook and fuck and wants to fuck three times a week and like you put in all these different okay. specs right um, fuck, I wish I knew the name of the, um... Doesn't, doesn't every dating service try to hook you up with that? Yeah, I mean, but I think that... Oh God, I wish I could remember the name of the business because it is so incredibly over the top where they're, the, the guy's like, hey, so what are you doing? And the other guy's like, yo, man, I've been on this... I've been on this dating site and they be telling me all kinds of shit. Like, it's so oh my over God. the top fucking, yeah. like, <laughs> 70s ghetto racist shit. It's, it's like, weird because yeah. I don't think they're playing it for laughs. <laughs> that is weird. Oh, God, I wish I could fucking remember the name of the guy damn dating service but i can't so fuck it mm. see I, I but if i'm the crackhead though and he's calling me honky mm. there was absolutely no way we can white be, crackhead we yeah and nobody we, said dollar shave is black right nope yeah so what are you talking about well, dollar shave isn't he's sunday jeff yeah sunday jeff who's white a jewish yeah. white. <laughs> he's the only one who has to fucking <laughs> take the hit god damn i wish i could remember the name of that fucking place oh i'll forget it i'll think of it for next week mm. what else we want to talk about anything <clears throat> uh what do, i went to the indy 500 oh yeah did you bring me back a white trash souvenir like i, I, like I, I brought you back uh, so i didn't bring it today unfortunately i did bring back a souvenir but i don't i forgot it at home today because i came straight from set i thought i was gonna go home first um unbelievable good was Great. it loud why is it good it was at my age i mean i'm 37 now and you get to a point where your routine your life routine is kind of the same day in day out you know what i mean like New experiences, truly new experiences, are kind of hard to come by as you get older. I I find, you know, everybody out there may be differently. It was completely unlike anything I'd ever seen before, anything I'd unlike anything I've heard before. The those cars go by you so fast that words can't. And they go by you two hundred twenty miles per hour, and you have no clue how fucking fast that is until you you see right. them. And it's the it feels. Dangerous. It feels exciting. It like it feels like fucking. It feels like nothing. I mean, they they just boof, boof, boof. they go by you so. But, fast. but yeah, how many times did you see him go around the track while you were there? Uh, two hundred times. So you stayed to the end. Stayed the, oh, the one? whole race. Absolutely. How long did it take? Uh, fuck. Three hours round round. So round so at, at at the three hour mark, you weren't just well, like I'd not. seen it's, this go around. I seen these guys go around two hundred ninety nine times. Each other. No. I mean, you're bullshitting and shit like that, and there's definitely a lull. But I'm just telling the, experience, the initial experience. The initial experience. Yeah, and the sound that you've heard in movies your entire life. That yeah, you can't. 
you're not, can't compare you're not to the real life. for how awesome it is. And the pit crews, I was sitting right across from the pit crews. They got those fucking cars in. They changed the tires. They fill the whole gas in like less than 10 seconds. It's something to see, man. It's like it was – I sat there and I was like I'm having a – a really unique experience for me. You know, there's a lot of it's it's a celebrity thing this auto racing. Do you think that you may want to get behind the wheel and Who's be- Mark Marin there? <laughs> <laughs> uh no way. I couldn't handle it. I'm not what? man enough to handle it, dude. That fast just looking at it like got me a little anxious watching cars go that fast cuz and when they're passing each other they're like this far apart and they're going to There's not a civic circuit. <laughs> 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 that I can compete on. Yeah. Where you go 75 miles an hour yeah. and you go around the track about 500 times? Uh, <laughs> no, I'll tell you, when I first learned to drive, I went over the Verrazano Bridge and it was I made my first week I had my driver's license. And I had to pass someone and I was I got up to 65 to pass them and I was like gripping the wheel. I was like, holy well, you're shit. you're a new driver. This is scary. Watching the race gave me that That feeling. same exact feeling. That same exact feeling. Like something's up. Like the power, act, the command of What's power. the highest you ever got a vehicle up to? Well, I've been o- over 100 on my motorcycle. So Okay. And so what was I'm that feeling that. like? Scary as shit. All I've right. only done it once just to see if I could do it. Right. And I was like, like I'm just, I got like real You're nervous. Real nervous, yeah. yeah. I'm probably like around 70 on my motorcycle. I was the highest. What about a car? Car? I mean, I regularly hit 80s and 90s. Driving home, I'll hit 88 miles per hour. So it's only going... It's only double what you usually do. No, no more than that. Two hundred miles an hour. You said twenty. All right, a little more than double. It's nothing. You could do that. This is spoken <laughs> like someone who has not seen the race, dude. It's fucking crazy. You can't even. You know how? Like, do you, they? Do they? Is that a? Is that a, a myth or is that some sort of like urban legend that they have uh, catheters? I think that's a myth because they're only dr- three hours. You can't hold them for three <laughs> hours. I mean, you probably shouldn't be racing if you can't hold them for three hours. I always thought that was the freakiest of all the uh, sports that you needed to have a fucking catheter yeah, to play it. I don't think it's true. <laughs> they, uh, I mean, and the fucking, there was I trash need a talking. <laughs> <laughs> I was not prepared for that. This one guy got bumped out by, like, she, she clipped him and he hit the wall and he was out of the race. And it was a girl. There were only four girls in the races. This guy, Sebastian, I forget his last name. Anyway, so they went backstage. They have these giant jumbotrons and he was just like, fucking full out was like you know this she doesn't belong in the race he's going she doesn't care about this race she doesn't care about her own future it's unfortunate that i got knocked out by someone who just doesn't care like it was full on like women don't belong in the race shit was diana patrick there no she jumped to nascar because you make more money in nascar Uh, um but it was like it was a fucking it was a lot of fun man it was it was you would do it go see it again with Oh, without a doubt, I will go back. Yeah, but only the big races. You would you go to like some of the smaller races? Yeah, I would. Yeah. I would. I mean, I don't think I'd make a habit of it. You know what I mean? Right. But I it's see- big. It's big down south, right? Yeah, car racing and, and stock car racing. Yeah, and it's like, uh, um, it's, I wonder what do you think? Why is it such a regional thing? I don't know. I mean, because I never meet anybody up here who likes it. <sighs> well, they had Wall Stadium. People used to go. Um, that that's like maybe a twenty five minutes from here. Like I remember going as a kid once or twice. My but what do you think uncle. it is? What makes it like like so popular down south? I think less to do back in the day. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, what, but what are are the, the uh, what, are the drivers athletes in your opinion? After seeing what after I saw, seeing what you've seen, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I wouldn't have said that before. No, uh, now without a doubt. I guess because they, they like it's so much st- upper body strength is needed, right? Like to keep the fucking steering wheel. Yeah, it's because Dan- Danica Patrick looks like fucking super strong. No, but it's like it's it's. <laughs> I mean, it's hand eye coordination. <laughs> it's a skill. What I read. <laughs> I'm just saying, though. But come she's on, strong. she's stronger than me. I bet she looks like a tiny frail thing. Yeah, she was the first woman ever to lead in the Indy. That's what I, I found out oh, this yeah? weekend. Yeah. Now, if she's. If she's, um, she looks like she belongs on uh, world's worst tenants, like she's a fatty stuck in a tub, are people as excited? No. No? No, she's really attractive. Like they have right? to crowbar yeah. her into the fucking yeah. car. Nobody wants to watch her. Well, I mean, uh, that's that's America, man. It's all about the aesthetics. Well, that's the reason I'm on TV. <laughs> maybe, maybe that's what we need to get Tom Steve Davis to the next level. Do we maybe need we a pretty boy? We need to boy? start working out a little bit. Like, oh, I, I think. 
got some lost cause. Yeah, I, you can't, I don't we think need I to can bring, work out my face. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, unless we're getting just plastic surgeries on the table. What if we did a tell <laughs> we like, do a Kickstarter? Like drug cartel members <laughs> and shit. A Kickstarter to get, to tell them Steve Dave a better looks. Yeah. Make the boys pretty. <laughs> <laughs> what if we did a 2014 tell them Steve Dave calendar? Like a... That type of thing. We get get him to do a month. Yeah. Dress him like a fucking like a like a bottle dump. In the background. <laughs> Suspenders. And D- shit. There's got to be a photographer out there who who jump at the chance. He would to be have involved to in be this. October look like a jack o' lantern with his teeth out and shit. <laughs> 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 Calendars are difficult though, man, because once the, one, they're they're to date a material, and yeah. I found you never want to date the material you sell. Yeah, I guess that's true. <laughs> that's unfortunate. <laughs> Unless. We did one of those calendars but that was like you get like the interchangeable dates. Is there a way to do that? Will you fill in the date? Will you fill in the number of the dates yourself? It's one hundred and forty dollars for the calendar. <laughs> no, 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 no. We talk about. Never heard that. You just no. get to print it out, right? For, oh, it's get blank. Oh, it's yeah. Right, where the date boxes are blank, and then you fill them in yourself. With, then, with like a dry erase marker. No, you even do it on paper where you just like you have 31 boxes. At that point, people are like, I'll just make my own. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Do people really want to tell them Steve Dave calendar for the next 15 years on her wall? <laughs> I know we can't hold on to the listeners. You have <laughs> no, no, it's not reusable. It's only usable once. All right, some of it's only. Oh, okay. Yeah, I hear that's you. I hear the stock you. doesn't okay. run old. Gotcha. That's what I mean. So it's. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. More investigation needs to be done on the Tell Him Steve Dave calendar, I think. All right. Well, let's see if anybody's interested. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I still can't find it. I, th- I thought maybe it was whatsyourprice.com. Like now I'm like consumed with trying to fucking find out. The second we stop recording, you'll, you'll I'll remember. I'll find it. Yeah. yeah, you'll remember. Whatsyourprice.com. Yeah, it's like a, sh- like a sugar daddy type thing. I don't know. Huh. I don't know, Q. I don't know. I don't know what the fuck it's saying anymore. And that's what we have this week, Dollar Shave. Oh, and then no, we're, we, gotta we, do got we got the Hulu. Hulu spot, too, at the end of the show we'll tack on. Did you, okay. we'll did do, we'll you do get Hulu. the email about the Hulu guidelines? for uh, About make sure that we talk about shows that are definitely on Hulu? Like, we broke every, Like, I was reading yeah. the email that we got <laughs> after we recorded the commercial. They are like, don't mention... Don't rip on other forms of, like, content watching. We were like, television's dead! People suck! <laughs> like, we just fucking... said that? You can't... Why? Yeah, why? why? They don't want to... They don't want to rip on other forms? Of, I don't know. Of they, delivery? We... I think we had ten rules. I think we broke eight of them. Like That's in the what, well, you, you know weren't what? supposed to say for Hulu? Yeah. Tell them Steve Dave is the podcasting rule breaker. Yeah, we're rebels. We're the bad boys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, if that's what you want to That's the way you'll, you want to think it? Eh. I mean, Sounds better than, you know. It's just assholes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can't even read. If there's a rule, we'll break it. Do we not? Do we We don't want to. Do we want to do a, a live show in Manhattan or no? If I if I could throw that together, one night only. When? I don't know. We can figure that out. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> what? What's wrong with maybe? <laughs> Just... I'm open to to hear what you have to say. Yeah. 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 I'll look into it. Find a place. Small theater. Now big. What's big? <laughs> Five hundred. Well, my grandma sees four hundred. That that I can get easy. But, you know. Do like a small. I don't. Know, we'll talk about it off the air. Declan's really gonna need to run that fucking gap-reducing no. fucking software. Poor Declan. I mean, is that? I've right, so got a new toy. I want to use it. Ooh. What do we got? So it's a shame I'm using it on a fourth-rate podcast like this. <laughs> yeah, I know. Now I got Mark about it. It's finally worth a minute. <laughs> What other commercials we got? We got a Hulu, but we're going to do that one. We're going to do a, a pre-record ad for yeah. the Hulu. Oh, you have another one? Uh, we're going to do it uh, today. Okay. Well, I, mean, yeah, I figured it better to not break into content. Okay. Because this is fucking riveting. Yeah. <laughs> As we talk about, we may or may not yeah, do a Manhattan may or may not show. Do shows. <laughs> Fun at Declan for the 10th time. I can't remember the name of the fuck. I think, I think, I do uh, think this may, I know you guys don't want to hear this and may disagree with me, but I think we we, we call back people that I think a lot of listeners don't even know who the hell we're talking about. You think that's off-putting? I think that maybe, yeah. We tried to, you know, maybe less of the, um, of those obscure callbacks of characters are like, who are they doing? 
Yeah, but you're talking about a show where we tried to do an episode zero and 20 minutes in, we were like, ah, fuck it, go back and listen since episode I was in a bad state of mind, I know. Yeah? Yeah. You want to try it again? Well, I I don't know. I want to to do something. I definitely want to do something so different, so crazy outside of what Tell Him Steve Dave would normally do, just to see if we could start to, um, you know, garner more, more legitimate uh, legitimacy. In the podcasting world. What are you thinking? I don't know. That's what I'm saying. I need, I, I don't know what I it's going to be. figuring out how to pander to the masses. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't want to dis, I don't want to uh, discount what we have. Right. But I want to, I want Declan to be just as proud of us as he is in Mark Marion. He's not, right? I, I don't know. But I want him to be, though. I guarantee he scratched off one or two of our fucking <laughs> testimonials to <laughs> 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 Uh, Make room for this one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it is, but boy, I mean, when I when when I think of it, I want it to be like, yeah, I want I want Mark Marion and um, the other guy to be like, whoa, yeah, who, are these guys? <laughs> who, who are these guys? Who are these guys? Oh, they're guys? asking that already. <laughs> <laughs> worry about that. Why are they asking it though? <laughs> if, if Declan fucking mentions it. <laughs> Oh, they're nobodies. They're not like you, Mark. <laughs> How long we've been going? Oh, good. I don't know, like an hour, and 20 minutes or something. I don't dare touch anything because I'd bring my recorder, so I'm afraid. Like one twenty-seven. Gonna... Anything, Q? Before we go, uh, uh, real quick, real quick plug. The Any only other... name for the uh, podcast wars that's mm-hmm. up for grabs. Is the puck nuts name when I know that's the toughest one probably to sell, mm. and it shouldn't be though because fucking on puck nuts worst day, it's fucking more enjoyable than on fucking Ming's best day and the two fucking <laughs> shitty pods he does. Yeah, definitely. Man. <laughs> but but I know it's tough though for to, to get that pod to get well, puck it's, nuts it's name. Well, it's gotten a stigma about it because of Ming. <laughs> <laughs> Ming is surfing now. Did you see that? I, somebody told me Ming that he don't was surf. surfing at like fucking four th- <laughs> <laughs> at like four thirty in the morning. Yeah, and like that's nuts. Ming is just finding anything or to to find a way to get out of his house. Or at this point, I think it's nuts. Like, can you imagine if you told your wife like at four thirty no. in the morning? She's like, "Where are you going?" You're like, "I'm gonna go to Asbury Park and surf." She'd be like, know. "He's on drugs or something <laughs> fucked up." Like, th- there's just no way. But but uh, I kn- I realized that the puck nuts name it's gonna be hard. To, right. to, to sell that last name, but I'm hoping that we sell that final name. It takes a true, true blue fan. Well, I don't even know if it's so, a fan. I don't want the a, psychology yeah. going on. Here. <laughs> I don't want a fan of it. I'm really hoping that there's a. I really wanted a legitimate business to like to to realize what kind of opportunity this was. But yeah, I don't know. Studios, man. I don't know if there. I don't know if there's a lot of pe- business people out there who are listening to. <laughs> the Declan- what about revolution cycles. Uh... Those I'm hoping, heads. holding out, holding out hope. <laughs> so uh, I got an email from uh, Revolution Cycles. What they say? Um, because well, I we need out, that money back. <laughs> I put out a call for webmasters <laughs> to start working on some of these projects that I've been talking about. Apparently, the guy who owns Revolution, who, who a side note, apparently has an ongoing dialogue with Stacy Patella. Apparently, they they chat a lot. What? Yeah. Oh. I know. Through Twitter direct messaging. They they talk a lot. She's was, never direct messaged me once. Well, you guys text. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like a direct what did, so uh, His wife, the owner of Revolutions uh, Studios' wife, does um, websites and wants to throw her hat in the ring to do oh, it. Wow. So I'll be looking at her stuff uh, later, see if we can come up with. I got plans, boys. I like to hear it. Yeah, you got all kinds of plans. You do? Uh, well, I, f- I figured out the key for us is... Get the ball rolling. Get the ball in other people's hands. If we Quickly. Could, <laughs> if we could do that, then I think we're going to be okay. And what I'm trying to do now is to get get my wide receivers in place and then just get the fucking ball to them and, and see what uh, they I can thought, do. I thought you were going to use some racing analogy, not football. Is after there your, after your uh, or, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Is there or a racist. racing analogy for, for, for a teammate? Um. I don't know. Pass the baton. Do they pass batons in auto 
You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> 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 a checkered flag, something like that. Uh, don't they have a checkered flag? I don't think so. I, I, I think. I, I mean, I, can you see the checkered flag through all the fucking all the um, Union Jack? Not Union Jack. What's that flag? Those uh, fucking uh, uh, rebel flags. <laughs> 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 the Confederate flag. Yeah, the Confederate shit. flag is flying high at all at all those meets, aren't they? <laughs> there are a lot of uh, Republicans at the, at the rally, like super Republicans. It's great. I saw a T-shirt. Come on, Maxwell's it. trying to make another beer run. <laughs> yeah, <something like> that. <laughs> was, was... me, one for Brian Jr. One I... for Brian Jr. Jr. <laughs> I could not believe it. I, I am so. De- I thought I would go there and there would be eye candy galore, like. Race sluts, you know what I mean? Like, really? Like, I thought like they'd be like bored, bored Why? college girls going to the race and stuff. College like that. girls care about auto racing? They do. They <laughs> thought bored could they be? <laughs> over over half a million people go to this race. That's what I'm saying. Like I was like, this will be great. I'm telling you, none. beer guts. I'm gonna say none, and I'm not even. I'm not even saying that for a fact. None. <laughs> Fucking none. I saw none. I was like, this is so disappointing to me. Wow. So disappointing. So don't go don't go to the Indy five hundred expecting to fucking see. I don't think many people I don't think most people do. <laughs> That's not what I would have thought either. Well, listen, I'm just telling you what I saw. I'm just reporting best I can. Uh but do go for the race. It was fucking phenomenal, man. It really How was. How much it cost you to get in there? Um my tickets were eighty five. You paid That's huh? it? Yeah. Wow, yeah. for the, that's like the most prestigious race, right? But you could pay up to seven hundred dollars for like suites. You could pay cheaper than that. Were you afraid of a tire flying off and hitting one of the other that's jokers? Like, so like an engine block fucking fly <laughs> off and hit Marie in the face. <laughs> um, I was. Shredded Sal got killed by a tire. <laughs> <laughs> Poor bastard. Because <laughs> it happens, man. I know. Mm-hmm. Closed casket. Uh, that's, it's, it's, <laughs> <laughs> Do, it, what is it a myth also? The catheter you've dispelled. Yes. Is it a myth that people only go to see the crashes? If there's no crash, people are kind of disappointed? Uh, there was almost zero. There were no major crashes in this race. And people were saying it was the most exciting race they had ever seen. Oh, so the people are not there to see the carnage. I'm sure there are people who are there for that, but that's not... I mean, people were into it, Walt. People were, like, discussing leader changes and, and who won. Well, I would year. hope, you know, that this, yeah. you know, you're into it if you're there. Yeah. Um, all right. So you're you becoming... You got a new sport now. I don't think that I'd watch it on TV or no. follow it, but... For a, for a, an experience to, to do, I like I, I think have gotten more I than think I you should g- I think you should dabble in it. Like go slow, a little yeah. stock car racing. Well, there was a guy who got knocked out in the third <laughs> the third lap. <laughs> Starts out in bumper cars in Coney Island. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a real racer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at me! <laughs> me, Paul Newman did it. Yeah, yeah, Steve McQueen. Um, that football coach. Dennis Johnson? No, not Dennis Johnson. Um, Jimmy Johnson. I just think that I'm too old. But Jimmy Johnson's older than you. Yeah, but when did he start? I don't know. That's the sport. You don't have to be young. I thought like you can go into well into your seventies and and auto race. I don't know. I think you need. You know who did it for a little while? Um, Robin on the Stern Show. Really? She got into it for a little while. Yeah. NASCAR or Indy? Indy seems more dangerous to me. I don't know which one it was. Yeah. She was racing cars around. <laughs> Uh, it's not it's, something it's really. what a lot of celebrities get into it though. Yeah. You know, because it's one of those because it's like it's a rich man's sport. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You can get a sponsor. Revolution Cycles. Revolution Cycles, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dollar Shave Sunday Jack's face on the side. <laughs> <laughs> on the side of both of your of your of your uh, doors, <laughs> that stupid smile that they always have on. Somebody fucking someone photoshopped that yeah. onto a, onto a NASCAR. So they have NASCAR. <laughs> that that stupid grin he always has. <laughs> right Wait. underneath it says, "Respect me, respect my money, <laughs> respect my speed." <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. All right. Wow. That's it. What fun. All right. I don't think this is the one we send in to get into the upper echelon, no. Um, nah, but you know what? I, I think... Uh... If I have it my way, you'll never be connected. <laughs> <laughs> Tell him, Steve, Dave. I hate the big Adam's apple I have.
hate the color of my eyes. Hate the way everybody hates me. Hello? 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 Hey! Can you hear us? Who is this? You want Edgar? No, 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 bro. Is this Brian Johnson? Yeah. Wow. It works, Q. I can't believe Walt I told you, bitch. To you work. fucking doubted me. I doubted you. Doubted that, was that wrong. the technology exists and it only exists for fucking celebrities. <laughs> like us. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. What year is it, Brian? 1978. 1978, bro. Whoa, we went. We called way back. <laughs> Um, all right. Brian Who is this? Why, why are two adult men calling me and talking about what year it is? It's not Captain Longnuts. Don't worry. Relax. Um, you're not going to believe this, but we are calling from the future. The future? Yes, the future. <laughs> uh, I'm your friend who you've just recently met, Walt. And the other Walt guy... Walt Flanagan? Be... From... <laughs> Walt Flanagan from fifth grade? The... The one that people like less than even me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you might, so you might want to believe. Uh, but yes, and the other guy with me is a friend that's gonna, you're going to meet in, in about 15 years. Hey, buddy. His name is Q. Wait, I'm friends with a caveman? <laughs> <laughs> what do you he do? sounds you weird, right? Why, why does he talk like that? Listen to me, don't make me reach through this phone and throttle that fucking neck of yours, you little bitch. Hey. <laughs> well, anyway, I, I want to call you because you're, you're kind of having problems in the, in the, in the, uh, in 2012. Or 20, what year is this? 2013. <laughs> 2013. <laughs> you're kind of, you're kind of going through some problems right now. And I thought I'd use my time phone to reach out to you and let you know. What is that? <laughs> what is that? He's having trouble back then. <laughs> and we're calling him to tell him he's having, tr he's having trouble now, too. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to like... Someone trying never gets better. <laughs> Brian, you're not writing notes about how you hate yourself and putting them in a little bank of tears, are you? Uh, you know, <laughs> coincidentally. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're calling you today to let you know to stop <laughs> Why? Right, because it's full and I need a new bank because <laughs> it's not gonna help at all buddy no because I want to try to stop the chain right now break the chain right now and maybe we can av we can avoid the future the future's not written Sarah Connor told us this in a movie you haven't seen yet but it's fucking kick-ass bro oh, you're gonna fucking love you're it. gonna love it is this a thinly availed attempt to get me to commit suicide <laughs> Not just the is the call coming Why from inside the house? <laughs> What's that? Is the call coming from inside the house? <laughs> <laughs> no, not that movie. Oh, okay. <laughs> a better movie than that. I'm telling you, I want, I'm, I'm calling to tell you that you're a fucking great dude, and you're too hard on yourself, and also to let you know that TV in the future is fucking way better than you ever imagined. Better than Mork and Mindy. Oh, dude. <laughs> You know how you're addicted to good times? Good times? Is it better than what's happening? It's, 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 it's fucking better than everything, bro. It's Do you know how you can only watch one thing at a time? Yeah. Forget about it. With something called Hulu Plus? What, like a hula hoop? Like for girls? <laughs> what are you calling me? So, what, am I a nook? <laughs> <laughs> There's something called the internet in the future, and it's this device that people jerk off to and watch TV. Do you all jerk off yet? Do you? You're, all, you're only. How old are you in 1978? Because I know Q. Uh, Q at 10 years old is probably sp sperm laden right now in a cocoon. Yeah, there's, there's a two year old me sitting around somewhere right now. <laughs> you're only two yeah. then. <laughs> <laughs> just covered in just covered in his own cum. We got we, well, we got to make another call. When we're done with this. <laughs> yeah, we got to make a call. If you could be bothered to answer the phone, you only have two free hands. <laughs> <laughs> like, let me spit this out, you fucks. We gotta talk about Hulu Plus. In the future, men call ten-year-old boys and talk about being encased in sperm. <laughs> <laughs> you you are a special ten-year-old. You're not like the other ten-year-olds. Oh, okay. <laughs>
<laughs> this Hulu, pl- anyway. this Hulu Plus of the future. Tell me about it. <laughs> Give me okay, a reason I'm to live. I'm going to tell you that um, that there's a device called Hulu Plus, and you can watch TV anywhere, anytime. It- it's amazing. Well, that sounds like uh, so, uh, that, that, that Dude, sounds like a reason worth living for. Tell me a little bit more. <laughs> Bro, don't discount how fucking important TV is going to be to your future, okay? You spend about 23 hours a day fucking watching it. Surely I have a social life and I never get addicted to any substance that would make me give up hope. (laughs) Just focus on the TV, dude. Don't worry about the other stuff. Trust us. All right. Listen to me. You know how, like, you got to wait, like, like if you miss an episode, you got to wait till, like, reruns in the summer for it to come back on to catch it? Of course. That's the only way it could possibly be. What a... (sighs) Thing of the past, bro. Thing of the past. How about any show you want to watch at any time you want to watch it? How about that, buddy? I would. I've. I mean, I have died and gone to heaven, right? Oh, that sounds. Listen to that this. Sounds let, me, like- let me read this to you, and don't and don't interrupt, so we can get to through this. With Hulu Plus, you get total control to watch thousands of shows whenever you want. Use Hulu Plus on connected TVs, game consoles, Blu-ray players, Roku, Apple TV, PC, or watch from anywhere on your smartphone or tablet, on demand at all times. With Hulu Plus, you can binge. You're going to learn a lot about the word binge, bro. Right now, it's about TV, though. You, you can binge on full seasons, which is what you do. I mean, you, you in the future, it's, it's all you do. It's all you do is binge on full seasons of TV. I binge on TV, <laughs> drugs, and food. <laughs> um, hold on, uh, your favorite Should, current well, shows. We be telling him this is about his future. <laughs> He's fucked anyway. <laughs> and even a full series of runs of classic TV shows. Well, you're watching right now on your favorite shows are considered classics, Bri. Really? But, uh, tell yep. me about this Hulu Plus. Uh, am I able to pause it to take uh, beatings from my parents? <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, great. And it only costs $8 a month. $8? Well, in, in, 19, in 2013 <laughs> dollars, that's nothing, bro. That's next to nothing. That's what my family spent on clothes for me for a year. <laughs> <laughs> So what, so what you do is you go to our show homepage on Smodcast.com and click on the Hulu Plus banner for your extended free trial or go to HuluPlus.com slash TESD. Now, you don't know this, Brian, and I was hesitant to divulge this information because I think it's, but I think it's important. You know how much you love TV? Oh, I, oh yeah. Well... I'm going to tell you this now because I want you to I want you to change your life around now as a youngster. You are going to be on TV one day. You are going to be on a weekly TV show. No, me? Right. And you're going to be on a something called a podcast. It's going to have hunt uh, hundreds of like diehard fans that are going to that are going to hang on your every word. You're going to be beloved by us by a group of people. And and surely along with that comes comes riches and 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 fame, right? Well, you get to spend a lot of time with Ming Chen, if that makes you feel any better. A Ming Chen? Yeah. <laughs> Ironically, I know what you... I know like, a young Brian Johnson probably thinks that uh, TV... You know, being on TV comes with, like, you know, being a millionaire. But in the future, being on TV, really, it really doesn't it bring the riches, the green riches, but it brings something better, man. It brings validation that you... Are a good person and a funny person. So millions of people can see my giant Adam's apple. <laughs> no, no, you'll cover that with a giant unkept beard, my friend. Don't worry, you got that covered in the future. Wow, the future sounds disturbing. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, b- before we go, I just want to tell you, buy stock in MySpace, bro. Trust me. MySpace? Are you sure not Friendster? <laughs> no, no, my. <laughs> Fuck him, he never paid me back that money he owes me, so I want to fuck him now. <laughs> MySpace, bro, all your money in MySpace. All right. All right, so stop writing those nasty notes to yourself, because you don't need them. You're, you're the best. Wow. Oh, yeah, you're, you're, you're awesome, dude. Two strange men called me and promised me happiness in the future. Life is good. <laughs> Well, uh, we're not promising anything because you're not happy in the future either, but but we got to run this ad. We got to think of something. All right, good enough. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Fry, stay strong, brother. See you later. Nice talking to you, Fry. Bye.
All right, so Q, that's Hulu Plus. That's amazing. I think we did some good here today. This has been a production of Smodco Internet Radio. Sir, only at Smodcast.com. All right, well, go, I guess go farther away then so you don't get that background. Go downstairs. Yeah, go in the, I guess go in the basement so you don't get the doubling. Okay. Just go on the stairs and close the door. <laughs> Is he falling down the stairs? Especially when Brian walks out of that basement, he's going to be a changed man. <laughs> right? Wouldn't it be great if he came out of the basement right after doing that, or doing this commercial? Yeah. He was totally clean shaven. Oh, that would be amazing. <laughs> Let's turn around and say. Here he comes. Here he comes, and no. No. Nope. Uh, yeah, right. Same Brian. <laughs> I have a complaint. None of the rafters that I tried to hang myself from downstairs <laughs> support my weight. <laughs>